afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. As always, on the fourth Wednesday of the month, I'm joined by Mark Labar, conservation biologist for Audubon, Vermont. Great to see you again. Always great to be here. And so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, um, we're talking about a bird which is not one of the most common um, birds in the state, a warbler called the golden-winged warbler. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a bird of great focus up and down uh, the East Coast and up into the Mid-Atlantic, I mean the uh, Midwest. Uh, this is a bird that has been declining across its range, and so there's a lot of energy, time, and money being put into um, helping protect this bird and bring it back. And that was a nice shot of a nice male golden-winged warbler. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that dark throat and that yellow crest uh, with the golden wings, the golden wings on the side there. Uh, the female, as with a lot of other birds, a little less... Um, flashy. Flashy. Uh, so still got the golden wings. Uh, you can see this bird has um, got a little bit of nesting material. Mm -hmm. You know, these birds nest uh, close to the ground. And so um, there are species that needs uh, certain habitat requirements in order to, to make it work for them. And so where would you find these birds? These are birds that you find in that old abandoned farm field. You know, that field, especially here in the Champlain Valley, you only find them pretty much in the southern part of the Champlain Valley, sometimes to the north. Mm -hmm. Once you get into uh, the rest of the state of Vermont, they kind of fall away. Um, but this is a bird that likes, you know, that classic um, overgrown field that's slowly kind of growing up. Uh, Some scrub, maybe? Scrub, dogwoods, shrubby stuff. They do like to have a background of trees on the backside. So mm -hmm. usually, like I was driving around yesterday and had one, I looked at it and saw the habitat and I was like, there's got to be one of those things there. It had, you know, trees in the back, this scrubby old field that's growing up. And sure enough, I was able to go in and... Um, See that? I think we have a picture of that that habitat type that we have. Now, um, do they nest um, in the trees? No, they actually nest very low to the ground, within almost on the ground in some cases. So here's a classic golden-winged warbler habitat, and here's um, an actual nest. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are not birds that nest up high, but so they need that structure of goldenrod and dogwoods, a couple of trees to sing from, to perch on, to sing from, um, and then they nest really low, oftentimes attached to goldenrod stems or again to um, dogwoods and things of that nature. Is that one of the reasons why they're not so many of them. Yeah. So what's happening, at least up here, uh, we have uh, money from the National Fish, National uh, Fish and Wildlife Foundation that is helping us in Audubon, New York, work with these abandoned farm fields. You go further south, the habitat is much more forest oriented, clear cut, but that habitat is slowly disappearing. And so there's a lot of work that's going into this bird. There's plans that are created, management activities um, that are out there. Uh, the, there's an actual golden winged warbler working group. Hmm. So a group of scientists that come together and have created all of this stuff. Um, there's a lot of research that's going along. Uh, you can see this is a golden winged warbler. It has some bands on its legs. So this is um, stuff where the you know people are following them. Um, at, uh, here in Audubon, we work with Audubon, North Carolina. They've been doing golden-winged uh, warbler work for a long time. In fact, a lot of these shots are from Curtis Smalling. Uh, but Curtis actually gets to go down to Nicaragua every year because that's one of the areas they uh, winter throughout uh, Central America. So it's the declining habitat up here mm -hmm. as development kind of encroaches in and uses up those farm fields and as the forest actually starts to grow in. So we work really hard to try to maintain that habitat. Mm -hmm. So I understand that the, these warblers have an interesting relationship with a, another species? They do, another winged warbler, mm -hmm. uh, the blue-winged warbler. Now, the blue-winged warbler uh, tends to like the same kind of habitat. You can see here that uh, it's, instead of having those golden wings, it has those white wing bars and that nice classic uh, black kind of stripe through the eye there. Um, their songs are very similar, okay? The golden-winged warbler goes bzz, 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 and the blue-winged warbler goes bzz, bzz. <laughs> and so there's some variations yeah. on that. But these birds, uh, they'll interbreed and they'll hybridize. Oh, no kidding. And they create offspring that are little bits of each. Huh. And we also find those. Uh, one of those is what's called a Brewster's Warbler. And these um, hybridized birds, you can see here, this uh -huh. is the Brewster's, got a little golden wing to it, right? Mm -hmm. Got that golden wing crest in the wings, but then it has that really dark um, eye stripe like the um, the uh, blue-winged and then the other one is the Lawrence's warbler 
and you can see it has some oh, traits yeah. of the golden wing but some traits of the blue winged and what makes it difficult for us is they uh, not only hybridize but they they will exchange songs <laughs> so like yesterday when I was out saw mm -hmm. a golden winged warbler but it was singing a blue winged warbler song so um, they can be quite confusing. Uh, the hybridization is, is, can be a problem because the blue wings are slowly, as they move in and hybridize with the golden wing, you're losing those pure golden wing species as they start to hybridize. But they use the same habitat, so. And what about other species? Um for that habitat that you're trying to manage? We, again, that early successional, that shrubland habitat, as we call it, um, hosted a bunch of priority species. The Champlain Valley Bird Initiative, which I head up, uh, works to, to help landowners manage for this. Uh, species like field sparrow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great uh, little brown bird that you would find in an old field that's come up. I often think of it if you've got an old field with a lot of juniper in it. This would be a bird you would find there. Uh, prairie warblers. Uh, again, a species uh, that occurs um, in the Champlain Valley as well as the Connecticut River Valley. Um, another one, saw one of these yesterday when I was out, a brown thrasher. Uh, this is a big bird. It's in the mockingbird and catbird family, so it's a mimic, so it makes lots of different noises. Um, and eastern towhee. Um, and I thank the Wakefields for this picture. Uh, these guys do the drink your tea is, the, is their song. And they, you know, so it's actually a, you know, a, it can be a tea party when you have a whole <laughs> bunch of them around. And then finally, one other species is the American woodcock, mm -hmm. which are uh, displaying pretty regularly right now. We've had them at the Audubon flying around. They do that, their nighttime flight. But again, they all like this early successional habitat, um, which has to be managed in, for, in order for it to um, remain present um, here in the valley. And you say managed, what do you mean by that? Well, one of the things that we do um, with the Champlain Valley Bird Initiative is we actually go out and we'll work with you know, landowners, uh, both private and public, to help give them and provide recommendations for them so that they can effectively manage for uh, the species. A lot of times that can be brush hogging or some tree removal, um, something just to, to set that habitat structure back if it's getting too much to forest, or, if there's development going in, hopefully uh, develop appropriately. Um, so we actually get out and we walk the property with landowners uh, and uh, talk to them about how they can, um, you know, use their monies and sometimes some incentive program monies to manage specifically for this species. Mm -hmm. And so, is this a popular thing for people to do? Do you think people are? It's more popular than it has been to convince landowners or are landowners more interested in conservation? Well, it's interesting because certainly we look at the golden-winged warbler and we think about the golden-winged warbler. But this habitat structure also uh, is great for turkey, deer, grouse. So oftentimes when you talk to landowners, you talk about the broad suite of species, uh, both um, you know, avian and mammalian that are using this habitat type. And oftentimes folks will, you know, uh, maybe they're hunters and mm -hmm. they'll manage for that and as a side result we get some golden winged warblers in there. Um, so the difficult part is getting the money to them to do that. So we work with the Natural Resources Conservation Service, part of the USDA, in order to help provide some incentive monies to landowners um, if they apply. Mm -hmm. And the other piece that we've been working with is been, which is really interesting, is we've worked with power lines. So the Vermont Electric uh, Power Company, Velco, mm -hmm. uh, we've worked with them over the past three years to look at the habitat underneath their right-of-ways. And you can see here you know with a power line you can't let the trees grow up because that um, will you know get in the way of the power lines right so they have to manage underneath that and it used to be they used to you know a lot of power companies would just you know mow everything down uh, but we've been working with Velgo, Velco and they've um, adopted some very integrative management techniques so they create this permanent kind of shrubland habitat uh, underneath the right of way. And we found uh, when we've done surveys from, say, Williston down towards West Rutland, that there's a host of um, these shrubland bird species that take advantage of the habitat underneath the, the power line. How do you measure your success when it comes to the warblers? 
Well, but bird by bird. So this summer, what we're doing is we're actually going out and we're working again with Audubon chapter volunteers and other volunteers to kind of see where these birds are. You know, we've uh, identified about 150 sites within the Southern Champlain Valley, which we hope to visit. Uh, we're contacting landowners to get permission to get out there. Uh, and in some cases, you're just driving along the road like I did yesterday. And you look up and you say, wow, that looks like good golden winged warbler habitat. Mm -hmm. And there's the bird. So our first step with it is to see how many birds are out there and get a good idea. And then again, when we do find them, uh, to work with landowners to, um, to try to continue to manage for that, their, their property for that habitat. Mm -hmm. And so are they banded? Well, one of the things that I hope to do this summer is ban some to see we're working at two demonstration sites. Uh, we have one at Japrags Park in Hinesburg, and we have another one over at the Charlotte uh, Wildlife Park and Refuge. And both of those sites support um, golden winged warblers and have shrubland habitat, and we've done some management work there. So I hope to get out and do some banding so that we can see whether the birds are actually it's the same birds coming back year after year. We mm -hmm. suspect that's the case, but you can't really tell. Um, so I'm hoping in a couple of weeks, yeah, to get out there and see if we can catch some and, uh, and then see how our management on those two different parcels, um, you know, we work with the town of Hinesburg, we work with the uh, Winooski uh, Natural Resources Conservation District um, to manage sites. So now we're going to go back and hopefully the birds will enjoy what we've done for them. Excellent. Have you seen any trends at all this spring? It just seems to me like We've been sort of off to a slow start. I notice I haven't seen as many birds, I think. It's, it seems a little bit slower. And we're, you know, May is one of those months where the birds come in, you know, the weather is changing. So I think you'll probably see um, a bump in numbers as, as time passes. Um, I, I haven't heard too much that there's a, you know, there's a lack of birds. We have our tree swallows back, mm -hmm. which is great at the Audubon. We haven't had them for the past two years. So um, there's always a little bit of change, but um, I think if you keep your fingers crossed, everything will, will pop up. We should mention too that uh, you have your annual Birdathon coming up. The Birdathon is coming up, and uh, that's a fundraiser for Audubon where we go out and we try to see as many species of birds in one day. And we, uh, I look to get donations from folks in order to help support Audubon. So um, viewers out there, if they're inclined to support me on the Birdathon, they're more than welcome to uh, give me an email or write um, at the, uh, the address that we show at the end of the program. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about what those funds are used for. They do everything from support the work that I have to support the Green Mountain Audubon Center mm -hmm. um, to you know the education programs there. Uh, they help with supporting other programs. Uh, we, in the same way that we work with Champlain Valley landowners, we also work with uh, folks in the rest of the state as, as far as managing their forests for birds. Mm -hmm. So all of the different programs that we have, these monies come in and just are a general contribution. You know, we're a, a small nonprofit and so everything helps and this is a fun way for us we get together as a whole uh, group and uh, we go out and we don't um, usually don't use any fossil fuels sometimes we do if we have a, a, somebody that is injured or can't get around but we try to walk and bike mm -hmm. uh, and see as many birds as we can and this year we're shooting for I'm shooting for getting a golden winged warbler on the list. Well, now you know where to look because you I, see I, one. <laughs> I do, I do. We're going to go, I'm going to hopefully go to, over to Japrags Park on that mm -hmm. day and pick up a golden winged warbler. Uh, I don't think we've ever had that uh, on our birdathon list, so that's, that's my goal, seem, be, primarily because the golden winged warblers are going to be a major part of my existence for the next two years. So. I was going to ask you um, what's coming up for you the rest of this summer. The, well, that and, you know, more, my turn work up on the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, but because we have this funding through the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation that's going to support our work doing golden winged warbler and this other shrubland birds, that um, a lot of my time is going to be out there looking for these birds, working with volunteers. And then again, as the season passes and as these birds migrate back, back down to Central and South America to then start working with the landowners to see whether we can create, maintain more of that habitat so that there's um, space for those birds to return uh, when they come back next year. I was going to say, if the bird comes one year, will it come back to the same place? Oftentimes, they can be very site faithful. Um, yeah. That's one of the things that we have to watch because you can go into a site and you can manage it. And this is, we're, we're kind of keeping an eye on your prags, but if you change it too much, 
you know, where you had birds, you may not have birds. So one of the things that we'll be doing is visiting a number of sites where management has occurred um, and where we have done projects um, with NRCS and to see how the birds have responded to that, those management activities. Okay, well, thanks a lot. If you have a bird-related question, you can pass it on to Mark. You can write to him at the Audubon, Vermont, 255 Sherman Hollow Road in Huntington, or you can email Mark questions at mlabar at audubon.org. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.